One of the best known fishermen in Ireland is Basil Shields. Competitively, Basil is probably the most successful fisherman around. He relocated from Fermanagh to the shores of Loch Corrib many years ago. Once the fishing season is open, Basil is out in the loch nearly every day. Oh, that was a fish there, isn't it? Okay, we might just get over him in a minute or two. It looked as if it was a mayfly rise. This is actually going to start turning the other way now. Today, Basil is fishing the mayfly dry. It wasn't big, but uh, certainly the, it's a perfect day for the dries if there was a, a bit more fly on the water. Basil's look soon improves. That was a beautiful tip. He just put his nose up. He's not a bad fish. He's putting up a right little scrap. He's gone deep. Oh, he's all right. Now that the trout is tired out, Basil gently puts the net under it and lifts it clear of the water. Uh, let's have a look at him. He's a pound and a half. Maybe a pound and three quarters. Take the mare fly at him. Take a second or two because he fought quite hard. Well, it'll take a second or two to bring him round. Without any ado, the trout is carefully returned to the carp. Then he just he'll want to go. There he goes. Put his skin on it should. Do the job, have a look at it. Yeah, that looks good. It doesn't take Basil long before he's back fishing again. Basil targets a fish feeding quite close to the boat. Soon he's connected with another nice brownie. Like the previous fish, this one is putting up a good fight. Basil has played out thousands of trout in the carb over the years, so this one has little chance of escaping the landing net. Spots on him, and oh, we'll just lay them back. Of course, like nearly all of Basil's fish, this one goes straight back to where it came from. He's ready to go. Okay.
and go back to the base. No wonder the trout of the likes of the carb, derg and mask are so healthy and strong when you see the bountiful hatch of insects that the locks produce. Mayflies are big, juicy insects that fish cannot resist. For this reason, live mayflies are collected for a unique type of fishing called dapping. Dapping fishermen use live mayflies as bait dapped or bounced lightly along the top of the water. The local school children are delighted to make some pocket money from selling mayflies that they've caught in the evening time to anglers first thing the following morning. The children, and indeed the anglers themselves, have ornate little boxes especially made to store the live insects. These fishermen won't run short of mayflies today anyway. Even the visiting anglers seem to be intrigued by the traditions associated with dapping. Dapping is a very popular and effective method of angling. When dapping, the angler points his rod downwind so that the wind extends the line, allowing the fly to be bounced lightly on the water. The angler strives to allow only the fly and none of the line to touch the water's surface. The fly, as such, is usually two live mayflies, or a daddy longlegs, or a grasshopper, hooked through the thorax. Ready to go. Restraint is essential when the fly is taken by an unsuspecting trout, for it is fatal to strike too soon. Keith Curtis and Peter Walsh, two veterans of the dapping method, explain what gear is needed for this specialised form of fly fishing. Well, this would be a fairly typical dapping rod. This, this would be um, a 16 foot or a 15 foot rod, but a lot of the typical ones we'd have would be a 16 and maybe some of them 17 foot. The wind takes the line out, a very light line, and it takes it out into the water away from the boat. We don't use any floss generally. Uh, we don't think we need it. Basically, we use this nearly all the time now. It'll be very, very light and it's very thin, but it's also very strong. So that's what you have then, and you have that just suspended on the water, and the trout just comes up and takes it. An old centre fin reel. And it's got a good ratchet on it, so fish just takes it when he wants. So really, you bite him on that ratchet. Just keep in touch with the dap all the time, like anything else you fish. They're very good, they're friendly. Just flick him through there. Right through the brown spire and spot in the tallax. Bring him up. Pop another one on. And bring them up together. Wings up. I had four days fly fishing and didn't rise a fish for four days. On six hour days, good days, then I took the dapping rod out and on the dapping rod that day I had eight nice fish on the dap. So it makes me wonder whether I should ever pick up the fly rod again. <laughs> <laughs>
Caravay House, four miles north of Uchtarard, is the accommodation of choice every May for a distinguished angler from Northern Ireland, 98-year-old Ted Malone. Ted, also known as E.J. Malone, is a highly respected author of books on fly fishing and angling in general. Before heading out onto the lock for a day's fishing, Ted chats to his gilly and longtime friend John Oliver Malloy for a few minutes about the important things in life. Well, it's a lovely area, this, isn't it? Coral oh, Reef, the surroundings. It's to me now, and, and I'm fishing the Coral since I was a boy. To me now, this is one of the most picturesque and nicest little bays well, on, on the Corrib. Goody and myself have, have been fishing for years now. And we fished everywhere, Scotland and all around, all around Ireland. And we come back to Corrib. Yeah, yes. And we come back here and we look up at the sky and we look at look at the clouds up there. Sure. Yeah, Where would you see yeah. them like? Oh, yeah, yes. And it's beautiful to look up there. Absolutely. And yes. you look back and see the 12 pins. Yeah, yes. Sure, yes. How, could you, how could you not come back? How many years have you been coming out? To, to coming to Curry even now to fish Curry for 30 years. 30 years, 30 yeah, years. yes. Uh -huh. And I don't think, I don't think you've ever missed a, a season. No, no, thank God. No, 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 no. It's a great achievement. I, I would imagine now, and I don't know, but, but uh, there would be very few anglers at 98 years of age being able to tie well, their own flies, go out and catch a fish on their own pattern. And have think, three books published. And three books published. <laughs> My gosh, that's, that's, the that's thing, some achievement. The one thing that I feel very much, very happy about, I picked up an antiquarian book dealer's catalogue the other day and they had one of my first editions oh, with yes. all the flies. And do you know how much they wanted for it, John? Yes. Two thousand pounds. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like You're in the wrong that, business. <laughs> I like to think that a man who's still living is a book's been sold for two thousand pounds. <laughs> Sure, they're good to be alive. Oh, why wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Th those are all your own. All my own time. All your own time. Oh. My gosh. Grasshoppers. Grasshoppers. Those are daddies. Daddies. Yeah. Daddy long neck. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, they're they're lovely. Yeah. Very very <laughs> natural looking. How long would you say are, are you tying flies? I'm tying flies. Yes. yes. Oh. 40 years. 40 years, my gosh, yes. A lot of them now would be all them made no, those, are all, those are all surface flies, yes, you know. Yeah. The, those are dry flies, odds and sods. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you have some darker ones uh -huh. there they use on the dead fly. Here's a mate, fly after flying into the boat. That's a good omen. Taking a break for refreshments on one of the plethora of islands dotted throughout the loch is always an enjoyable experience for Ted, his wife Judy and their gilly John. It's warm. It is nice warm. Just the right consistency. Of course, you don't have to be an expert to tie your own fishing flies. Dutchman Franz Beckers loves tying fishing flies to use on the rivers and lakes around Ireland. Okay, we're gonna tie an Irish mayfly on a size 10 hook with the uh, de Canard, which is a very popular setup at the moment. And we're starting with some teal. First set up some. Fly tying thread, halfway. The 
This one goes on top to the head of the fly, just make a few turns and then we slowly pull it down and you see a wing developing just about the length of the hook shank like this here. Okay, secure it. That's it. Right, we cut off the waist. Just secure it again here. Now we're going to use some cul de canard. And we strip away the fibers. They, uh, they are very attractive for fish. Uh, the reason is that they are very lively in water. They, they are not very stiff, but they are just, there's a lot of movement in them. So it's very popular for anything really, for dry flies and for wet flies. Right. We put it behind the wing. Right, for the tail, we use a bit of bucktail. Just a few fibers, about 10 or so. And if you hold them like this here, you take away the little bit of waste. Put them on top of the hook. Bring it to the back of the hook. We make some kind of a ribbing. Again, we can use peacock. Um, because the, the body of a mayfly is kind of segmented and that's, that's how we do it. Right. The next thing is a body. We are using a bit of bright colored dubbing. They call it seals fur but it's artificial, it's just made from fiber. Rolling it on. Now we use the black peacock to make segments in the body. Three or four times. Tie it off. In front and behind. Right. Okay, so far so good. Now we need a front hackle, it's kind of the legs of the fly. We can use either a small cul de canard, which I find very attractive for, for any fly, or you can use a fiber of just a hackle of a, a hand cycle, a cock hackle. Okay, almost done. Now we just make a nice neat hat. Okay. And tie it off and the fly is ready to use. They call it the Irish CDC Mayfly. Right. As we have seen, the mayfly season is an exciting time for anybody associated with fly fishing in Ireland. The tradition of fishing the artificial mayfly and dapping goes back a century or more, and except for improved equipment, has not changed much over the years. Visiting anglers love this time of year, despite the odd rain shower. And our own Irish fishermen and women can't be kept away from the lakes during the fantastic mayfly season. <laughs>